difficult, 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 Welcome to Difficult Women. That's right. I'm Marie. I'm Katie. And, and we're this your hosts. Is, this is it. This is here. We're here. We're here in my apartment in Brooklyn. But maybe we're in your car or in Ooh. your living room. I don't know where we are. But where, where are we? We're in your ears. That's where That's we are. True. We're That's right true. in your ears. Yeah. And it's a beautiful day and I'm thankful for you and me and life. I'm yes. in a good mood. Oh my, I love this. Oh, this is good. I like good moods are always good. I'm into good moods. I got my period, so that's always a good oh, thing. Oh, good news. Good news. Hallelujah. It's here. Hallelujah. Praise be. Not Praise that it me. wouldn't come. I mean, if it had come this month, it would have been immaculate conception. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm that just would always also be wait. kind of cool. Be so though. cool. Be kind of fun. Yeah, just third like, hey member guys. at least. Yeah, I would definitely make my baby join the band. D- yeah, child labor immediately. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're to work. for. How yeah. are you? I'm good. I'm good. I've been working a lot and stuff. I um I well you'll talk about it. I got into this um not like it was well I'm doing this film making class. Oh yeah. as a woman? There's a lot of women in the class actually. Hell yeah, There's there more, are more than there are men. Hell yeah. And we've been it's sort of like a real boot camp uh, going going at it. And uh-huh. I've been learning a lot. I've been learning that we've been shooting all of our videos wrong. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> we'll fix it. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> you know, you never know. You have to learn stuff to, mm-hmm. to be good at it. So that's what's been new with me. And that's all I can think about now is like I'm like been nerding out on like camera lenses that are too expensive. I'll never be able to afford them. Yeah. That. One day. Well, that's exciting. That's, yeah, that's new. Uh, you know, to be older and always and consistently educate yourself on new things, I I bow down to you. Oh, thanks. That's I respect that. That's Do you really know cool. that that's actually one of the requirements to, uh, to be not requirements to be a human, but one of the things <laughs> one of the requirements to be um, a human what? is to, to just keep learning. <laughs> well, but yes. So our brains, human brains, want to keep learning constantly, constantly, hmm. constantly. So I think that when people like depression sets in and things like that, when you are too much doing the same thing all the time and you're not learning something new so it's good to just keep challenging yourself huh. from one it doesn't have to be like a big skill but it could be learning an instrument or it could be getting better at your instrument or learning how to knit mm. i think that's like why that. we're on our phone so much i mean well i've been trying to push myself i've set up my phone finally where like it alerts me if i'm you know, on Instagram, I allow myself 45 minutes a day. And then after 45 minutes, I get an alert saying time's up. And then I just like ignore it. And then I keep going. <laughs> but I'm, I'm learning. I'm working on it. That's great. Though. But also I've been challenging myself. If I think of something that I'm curious about to Google it and then read an article about yeah. it a day or something. That's great. Yeah. So look, I'm not depressed anymore. I'm learning. Yeah, I'm lear- you're learning stuff online. I'm learning. It's perfect. Um, well, I do have to say, piggybacking on our revenge porn episode, uh-huh. I had a friend text me the craziest story I wanted to tell you oh just real quick. Yeah. One of his friends, um, I guess she was going through divorce or they were already divorced, but the ex-husband made a Facebook page with all of her Ugh. naked pictures That's on it. fucked up. And her kids saw it. Ugh, Their kids. So fucked up. Isn't that crazy? You know what's fucked up about that too, though? Because again, it's like back to that whole point that when you do something like that with the revenge porn thing, you're not just hurting the person you're trying no, to hurt. You're hurting, you're hurting their family. You're hurting the people around them. Oh. So it is so psychotic. Mm-hmm. It is so beyond psychotic to me to be going down that path. Mm-hmm. Or certainly not like you're not seeing all the damage that it could potentially do, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah, you think maybe you're going to just hurt that one person. No, it doesn't like that. No. But that person did go to jail for a little bit. So justice was You should should be in jail for something. Yeah. But I I didn't even think about like a public, like as public as Facebook. Yeah. But I'm sure that happens a lot. There was this guy I knew who, um, who's, I guess his girlfriend or something at the time got mad at him for something and did a similar thing where she just took like all these pictures that they'd sent each other, but it was like lines of Coke and like his penis and like all these weird things. And, and then he, she sent an invitation from his Facebook page, like, like it was a party. And oh, just no. so then it, oh, no. we all opened it, especially this is the time we were still opening <laughs> those invitations. And so like everybody saw it and his mother saw it. It was wow. just awful, awful. Wow. Yeah, so I think the worst that. thing I've ever done to an ex was like I, I got out like my mother's stationery. I was at you know my parents' house and I like, got out her stationery and like wrote a mean letter and then like mailed it to him. 
Like it was from your mother? No, oh. no, it was from me. But oh. I did it have I your mother's name on the stationery? Yeah, it was like her. No, no. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't. Own you the just stationery. pulled out some nice stationery. I'm, yes, very nice stationery. And that's letter. like the worst thing I've done to an ex. I'm sure if my exes were in this room, they'd probably have other things to say uh, that I've done. But that that to me is my. At least that's what I'm going to go to the grave with. Yeah, <laughs> it's just nice stationery letter that that oh, was a mean, mean letter. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah. speaking of mean and and letters, letters, not, not letters, letters like well, C D E F G. Yeah, well, let's we're gonna talk about a really some people think is a really bad word. That's true, and it starts with the F. We're gonna talk about the F word, froggin. No, just Fro- kidding. Ooh, no. <laughs> what's that? I don't know. That's what I say when you're supposed to say fuck, but you can't say fuck because there's a kid. So you say oh frog. Wow. Oh, but that that took us off point. The point was. <laughs> The word is feminist. Feminist. We <laughs> fucked that one up. It's all right. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. The this word. Is, <laughs> this is a, this is a good topic, though. This is I, a good topic. Well, it, it like dawned on me um, when so continue listening to our podcast, folks. But seriously, the Dolly Parton podcast. No, yeah. I know. I keep <laughs> talking about it. Everybody to the other. No, podcast. no. I mean, ours is way better. <laughs> but it. The first episode, Dolly's on there talking about the word feminist and how she says she's not a feminist. And it kind of blew my mind because in my eyes, I think Dolly Parton is when I think of a feminist, I picture Dolly Parton. Right. Which brings us to a good point. Why don't we do you want to read the definition of feminist just so we can have some point that we are all working from. And then we can discuss that too. Yes. So this says deficient, uh, deficient, (laughs) deficient, (laughs) deficient people. There you go. (laughs) Feminism. Uh, Definition of feminist, uh, a person who supports feminism and then feminism, definition of feminism. One is the theory of the political, economic and social equality of the sexes. And a second definition of it is organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. Great. So there you go. There you go. So what? So that's great. That's a nice clinical, clean definition that we can all kind of like touch back to if we need yeah, to. So what do you? So but you're saying that when you were thinking of a feminist, someone like Dolly, yeah, who just is all encompassing of number one owning. Like she is so feminine to me too. I think mm-hmm. that that's like, I mean, the word feminist you also can associate in a negative way of like. The stereotypical. Sure, but how do you see, what do you think feminism is? Well, okay, personally, yeah. I have a story. And this is how I kind of go back to what I think feminism is and what I'm fighting for. In fourth grade, when Mr. Rogers from the middle school came to tell us what instrument we would be playing in the middle school band, if we were going to be joining the band, uh, we all would go and, and Mr. Rogers <laughs> would look at our hands and, and kind of evaluate us. And I really wanted to play the drums. I just, that's exactly what I wanted. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my parents or anything, but like, that's what I really wanted. But so I go in and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do the drums. And, but I stayed silent. This man that I'd never met before looked at me and said, you're going to play the clarinet. And all the other girls were getting assigned clarinets mm. and some, most of the boys were getting percussion instruments and I, it didn't occur to me at all, you know, in fourth grade that how kind of unfair that was, but you know, going to fifth grade then and jo- being in the band, it's like all the girls are clarinet players and you know, there was mostly, you know, women flute players and then the boys were the trumpet and, um, trombone players yeah, and then all the drummers of, were all men some sort of strange gendering yeah thing happening so to me feminism is having the right to to do having the chance to do exactly what men can do like mm-hmm. i want to just be able to do what they do right no problem right and no issue just complete equality right and That's would it. You, and this is like <laughs> totally a loaded question but would you say we are there no okay so i just want to like yeah. Put that out there. What do you think feminism is? Basically the same thing. I mean, I, I think feminism is about um, having an equal opportunity at mm-hmm. every opportunity. Yes. And that doesn't just mean opportunities like jobs and things. That also means like 
having the opportunity to have the same emotional range Mm -hmm. as a man, you know, and like, like even in the, in politics, when they have these women that are angry, they say, oh, she's shrieking and oh, I can't, she's harsh and a bitch. Whereas a man can get angry and all emotional and it's not a problem. So Mm -hmm. things like that too, where everything is um, really equal. Right. You know, right. So I think that we're on the same page about that. That's nice to know. That's good to know. And then back to Dolly. Yes. With her, for for me, as like looking up to her as a role model, as a feminist, like for my feminist role model, it's it's neat that she is so feminine and she is so like fake tits and like, you know, but the stuff that she sings about is so feminist to me. It's so, so much about like men and women and 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 I mean, especially her older songs of like the struggle of um these these poor mountain people or you know and and that that to me is just so beautiful but the fact that all of a sudden I'm listening to this podcast and she's saying that she doesn't identify herself as a feminist and she really goes into like because I love men and men do this and men right. do that and all of a sudden it was it she is a feminist yeah. She's just afraid to use the word. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I started thinking about when we were getting ready for this is a lot of the comments that I hear from women when they say, well, I'm not a feminist. I'm not a feminist because I, d- I don't hate men and I'm not a feminist right. because I'm not like angry holding in a picket. You know, I'm not holding a sign in a march and I'm, I'm not an angry person and I, and I love men. There's two things that occur to me about that. One is that there is this notion that feminism means that you're a Mm -hmm. militant, Mm -hmm. Mm man-hating, angry woman. Mm -hmm. So there's that, and we should, like, unpack that. But the other part of it that made me so... It makes me so sad when I hear someone say, I'm not a feminist, I'm not a feminist, is that if you're saying... I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm not angry. I, I don't hate men. I'm not an angry person. I'm not, you're buying into this notion that we are told, that we are fed as mm. women, that you can be one thing. And if you end up choosing to be the angry person, then, oh, I don't want to be the angry one. I want to mm. be the cute one. I mm-hmm. want to be the light one. I mm-hmm. want to be the happy. I want to be the sexy one. I want to be the, because women are always put in these like categories. It's the Madonna horror complex mm-hmm. too, where you're not allowed to be a whole person so that's what feeds into my definition of feminism Mm -hmm. is i want to live in a world where i am allowed to be the full spectrum whole person and what i want to say to like dolly or or these women that say like well i'm not i'm not angry like i don't want to be you know known as the angry person i want to say aren't you angry sometimes though don't you get angry Mm -hmm. when it's not fair Mm -hmm. for you Mm -hmm. Because you should be allowed to also be angry about that sometimes. I'm not saying be, you have to be angry all the time. Mm-hmm. And most of these, the the most like traditionally, you know, negatively painted feminist women that are man hating and angry. I mean, some of them are legit like angry people. But even those people have a spectrum of emotion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're sometimes they're happy and laughing because they're a human being. You know. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's what really like hit me hard yesterday when I was thinking mm-hmm. about it. Well, I think you nailed it. It's like, the, uh, to me, the negative side of the word feminist is rage. It's like, I don't want to come across as this really angry woman because of the position that I'm in. Because I am, I'm white. I'm, I'm very, very lucky and thankful. But I'm really, really angry right. at where, where women are. And, and women aren't allowed to be angry. I right. think that's the most important right. part. Right. Is that, that we're not, it's not cute. Mm. it's not mm-hmm. cute mm-hmm. you know oh you're not, not, you're, not gonna meet a ha- you're not gonna meet a husband mm-hmm. if you don't if you're angry mm. but why you're mm-hmm. a human being you have anger everybody has different all the emotions and you're allowed to express them mm. and the thing about like oppression is that what's the what's the emotion that comes out of oppression uh it's anger right that's why there's revolutions and so. things like that so this idea that if we keep the women not angry you can't be angry then they can't revolt <laughs> and um. they can't do anything about it mm-hmm. you know and, it, and I think that it's that that notion of like, I don't want to be seen as angry is the exact reason why we need feminism. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes me sad about it. Do you think that we need to be using the term feminist more? I think we need to rebrand mm-hmm. because I think what feminism should not be, in my opinion, and this is just more an opinion thing, but I do feel very strongly about this. I think feminism should not become this man-hating thing. Mm-hmm. Because that's not the point. 
<laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, when, 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 when the early civil, you know, early um, suffragettes were fighting for voting rights, they weren't fighting to have two votes to every one male vote. Mm. They were fighting Just to have four. an equal vote mm-hmm. and an equal voice. So that needs to be, I think, our, like, the beacon at the end of this tunnel, because we're not there yet, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I think that that's part of it. I think also, the, even the notion of, like, the, to take down the patriarchy, I think people get a little carried away with that, but it's not because I don't think it's true. Like, yes, let's dissolve the patriarchy. But the patriarchy doesn't mean men. It doesn't mean, like, we need to destroy all men. Mm -hmm. Men are also victims of the patriarchal system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, or can be. So, and the patriarchy is just about that a system was set up and set in place in which men tend to be at an advantage. Mm -hmm. And that's not really serving everybody equally. Uh, Chimamanda Ngozi's TED Talk, she mm-hmm. talks about the higher you go, the more, the less women there are, just right. naturally. That's patriarchy. Right. And so feminism is just trying to get those higher positions. That's it. As a woman. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's very simple, but yet it's a very, I mean, like I said in a past podcast episode, that I I wouldn't say that I was a feminist in high school. I, I, would, I don't even think I would have said that in, high, in college. Yeah. But just because there was such a negative connotation to that word and what I thought that that word meant. Yeah, and I think that there are, there, and I'm not going to say that there aren't women out there that are being really angry fem- I mean again the anger thing isn't such a problem to me it's more that like it's like we're gonna kill all the men I'm like I just don't think that's productive mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't think that that's it's really not how I feel by any means like I, I love we love men, men. And all uh, we you know men are also humans mm-hmm. and men are also need to be ab- allowed to have their full emotional range you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. um so we found a specific list of um celebrities that had uh, sort of denounced the word feminism. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was sort of curious to find that their responses were all kind of different. It wasn't all angry feminism, feminists. There's sort of almost like, it feels like misconceptions around what feminism is Mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the people that popped up, I don't know how to say her name, Callie, Kelly Cuoco Sweeting, that girl from the, um, that TV show, this girl. Yeah. Oh, the Big Bang Theory. So uh, Kaylee Cuoco Sweeting from the Big Bang Theory, she was quoted as saying something along the lines. um, She says something about how I cook for Ryan, her husband, five nights a week. It makes me feel like a housewife. I love that. I know it sounds old fashioned, but I like the idea of women taking care of their men. So there's something about Mm -hmm. that, right? So she feels like she can't be a feminist because she likes to cook for her husband. Mm hmm. There are, I would argue that there are feminists out there, some of these ones that are maybe very extreme, that would say, yes, that's not feminist to cook for your husband. I would make the argument, going back to what I think feminism is, is it's the ability to do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And that includes cooking for your husband. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with cooking? There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you feel like doing. And if you've come to an agreement with your husband and there's a partnership there, so and and maybe he cooks for you. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, But maybe he never cooks for you. It doesn't matter. If it works for you and he's not demanding it from you or something, mm-hmm. and he's not saying, you have to cook for me because you're my slave. Right. right. Then Get back to the wrong? kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice to cook for the people you well, love. I think it's I think it's so feminist because... You're nourishing your family. Your job is to feed yeah. your family so that they're strong enough to go out into the world and conquer whatever they want to conquer. I think that's so fucking badass. Yeah. And and also, so a friend of mine, I was talking before coming over here, she said that her husband jokingly was like, you're not a feminist. You want to be a housewife. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. But also, if I, if her husband was here in front of me right now, I'd be like, that you're not you're wrong. <laughs> but she's yeah. she is a feminist. The only re- way it could be problematic <laughs> is if she really wants to be a stay at home house uh, housewife and he needs her to work in the world. <laughs> right. And she's trying to take advantage of his situation where it's like, well, you're supposed to be the breadwinner. You have to bring home the money. and I get to stay at home with the kids. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if that's not the arrangement that you guys are both agreeing to. Right. Now you're putting a, him in a position right. where that's not, you're, you're forcing the, the inequality in that sense where mm-hmm. he's like having to work where you're not having to. Mm-hmm. So it's like that, you know, 
I'd almost be more happy with someone saying like, I don't want to work and I want my husband to do everything for me. So I'm going to give up all of my rights just to let him do that. Then I'd be like, I don't, I disagree with you, we, but at we, least you yeah, have bring a strong it in, honey. perspective. Yeah. Like, at least I appreciate that. <laughs> so that, you know, that kind of thing. Well, my older sister, she's always joked that she wants to be a trophy wife like that and then do nothing. So I was like, well, that may not be as feminist as my parents have raised us to believe, but you know, you I mean, do you. you know, but then again, no judgment <laughs> again. If you're like, I want to be a trophy wife and I'm willing to give up my rights for that. That's then, feminist. Then no, I would say that's the opposite. <laughs> oh, that is the most well, unfeminist you can be. Well, yeah, but, because, but at least you're saying like, I'm, I, cause I think what annoys me is like, so this is another thing that's like drove me crazy <laughs> is these women that were like, that are like, I understand that people worked really hard for us to have like, you know, equality, but I think we're there now and like we're equal and I don't, I don't really, I don't, so I don't really want to participate in that. I'm like, well, first of all, you, they did, they had to do the work. You don't think it just, you're, you're, we're lucky to be living in a time where we're as equal as we were, because even in my mother's generation, women weren't even allowed to be anything beyond secretaries. Everybody got sent to school to be secretary. Nobody could be like a doctor or anything of any, not that secretaries aren't important members of a, a work environment, but that you don't have the option to be anything else. Mm -hmm. um, so for young women now to say, Oh, well, but I, I don't really see the problem. I think we're fine. I think it's like, you know, and like, I get it. Like, they had to fight for the right to vote. But like, now we have it. So it's like, okay. Well. We have a lot. I mean, listen to the revenge porn episode and then get back to me on if you think women are doing okay right now in right. society. Right. Um, well, so Dolly Parton, she said, um, I don't feel I have to march, hold up a sign or label myself. I think the way I have conducted my life and my business and myself speaks for itself. I don't think of it as being feminist. It's not a label I have to put on myself. I'm just all for gals. I think that there's nothing wrong with what she's saying. But I said this in the last episode, too. Mm hmm. And not to make this negative connotation, but I think that what she's saying is feminism. Right. So it's sort of like saying, like, I'm not a racist, but I hate black people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, then you're racist. Like, right. the, you know, and if it's you're, like, I, I'm not a feminist, but I just want equality for all. Yeah. Then you're, I mean, you know, and you had asked earlier, do you think that, like, w what about the label, right? Mm -hmm. Look, if we want to label it something else because the word has gotten too dirtied by this negative connotation on it, then fine. But I, we, I haven't, I've yet to see a word that's working for us. Right. Because up, up to this point, it's feminism that got us the right to vote. Mm hmm you know, right. it's feminism that's been fighting for um, the whole ERA thing. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is a really big point that I think people do not know about, which is the Equal Rights Amendment mm -hmm. in the Constitution. At this moment, right, right now, mm -hmm. the Constitution does not protect women. I, 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 I don't know that people fully understand that, mm -hmm. that they it. It is we are we have not clarified in the Constitution that when they say all men are created equal, mm -hmm. they've not clarified whether that means men mm -hmm. or people. So in as 2019, of right now, yep. so still as of not right clarified. now, the gov under the wrong in in the wrong hands, and we're kind of maybe in those hands right now. <laughs> Those in the wrong hands, right hands oh. those tiny orange, tiny <laughs> hands, tiny, tiny <laughs> orange hands. <laughs> but in the wrong hands, you can the the Supreme Court can be making cho choices oh, based yeah. on the Constitution, the way that it's written right now, mm -hmm. and interpreting it as men, not women. Which means, in effect, we don't we are not protected by this Constitution. So anybody out there that wants equality and wants the protection, you better not be turning your nose against feminism because it right. is the feminist movement that is, that going is to fighting save our asses. Yeah. yeah that's fighting for the ERA. And that's where like I just wonder it's fine to be like um you know I'm people were using the word humanist a lot I saw even Susan Sarandon she was like really? she's like such a she is like a sign carrying marcher you know right. and she's like I'm not a feminist I don't I don't like that I I want to be feminine I want to whatever and I'm like dude you you are a feminist already, first of all. And she said, but the terminology she wants to use is humanist, right? Okay. So I get it. Mm -hmm. Like, I get it. I think that the concept is not bad, which is that um, that we are all human. Like, that everybody should be equal. It's not women shouldn't be better than men. It's that we're trying to be equal. I'm like, okay, th that's what feminism is. It's not <laughs> about women being better, but fine. Mm -hmm. The thing to me about the humanist label is it smacks to me of like 
a whole all lives matter vibe mm. where it's like mm. you're saying, well, w- women shouldn't be more important. We should. I mean, everybody's important. I'm like, yeah, but we haven't gotten there yet. Mm-hmm. We're not there. So like you can it, all, black lives matter is important because people aren't noticing that black lives matter. So to jump in and say, well, but all lives matter. It's like, yeah, but <laughs> like white people's lives have already mattered more. Mm hmm. So you have to have a movement that can protect and give a voice to the people that haven't had the space. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think, why it's called feminism and not humanism, for one thing. Right. Also, I haven't seen humanism do anything. Are they helping with the ERA? I don't know. (laughs) You know? But don't you think these people are using the, the that type of language saying I'm a humanist because they don't want to offend men? Yeah, but what's the but why it's like it but it's but are they not wanting to offend men because society is putting us in, in a in a pickle? You know what I mean where it's like if we are angry and offending men all the time, then we can't get the jobs that we want because the men are actually the bosses at the moment or is it that we don't want to offend men because I mean it's the full cycle though. It's like, why, why me? Why did I not want to be, say I'm a feminist in college when I was definitely outspoken and, and was raised by a feminist mother? And, you know, but it, it was because I didn't, I was taught as a Southern girl to be, you know, quiet and, and keep the, everything calm. Right. And not rock the waves. And I feel like a lot of these women, Dolly and Susan Sarandon, I think also with them, there's probably a bigger thing of like, you know, selling records or selling movies or, you know, just keeping, you know, their fans at bay and and making sure that everybody loves them. Everybody loves them. Sure. But you don't get shit done until you break through and and like cause waves. (laughs) I guess what I would I think what you're trying to say, too, is that it's like you you don't want to offend men. Right. But we but we've been putting them first the whole time. So I'm not saying we have to be going and being super angry and saying fuck men, but we do have to bring up, put a light to the stuff that's not working for us, like mm-hmm. the whole Me Too movement and stuff. You know how like there's been people who have been like, oh God, but these poor men, like they're freaking out and they're like so fragile. Like they feel really fragile right now because they've been sort of protected by the system that isn't working for us. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden women are saying, actually, guess what? <laughs> We're not okay with this. And I think that there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. It's nothing wrong with like rocking the boat and doing things like that. People are afraid to do it because we've been told our whole lives that we're not supposed to be doing it. Mm -hmm. But if you really do, or if you're really interested in equality, Mm -hmm. and some people are not, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you really do think that you deserve to be treated equal to a man, then, then, then there, you know, there's going to be some feathers that are ruffled right, a little bit. Right. And that's okay. And and I think that what I what makes me sad when someone like Dolly or Susan Strandon doesn't step behind that word or or at least something along that, mm-hmm. and the word is more symbolic, I think, is that they're basically sending the message that, you know, well, I want to be a strong woman and I want equality, but not not at the expense of making men uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but it's okay if they're a little uncomfortable. I don't want them to feel I think that we can make them uncomfortable by shining a light on their behavior and then also go, we love you and let's get through this together because mm-hmm. we need you to help us with this. You know, like, let's all do it as one thing. Let's all move together towards equality. It's not about like us versus them. It's about like us deciding we're all going to like make some changes so that p- humans are treated better on this planet. Mm-hmm. Women and, you know, and that and then, of course, there's a conversation about civil rights, too, of course, in there. Right. But just for this, for the sake of argument, mm-hmm. we're talking about. Can I think can I throw another one at you? Yeah, it's about two, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, what, do you want to one yeah. that stood out to you? What was one well, that stood out to you? Well, I wanted to blow your mind with uh, Monica Lewinsky. Mm-hmm. It's not set claims that she's not a feminist. She has said, given my experience of being passed around like gender politics, cocktail food, <laughs> I don't identify myself as a feminist capital F. Yeah. I honestly am not mad at her for that. I'm one. not mad at her <laughs> either. We discussed, like women threw her to the wolves. Yeah. The feminist women threw her to totally. the wolves. Yeah. And that's where I also feel like that's those feminists like need to, Think again, like, what are they fighting for? Mm -hmm. I know I'm not mad at her for that. But I think if anyone was to be a part of this huge 
movement of feminism, right. Monica Lewinsky could be the one to like, yeah, really rally the troops here. And again, I think that there's that weird distinction, like with the which my my not so perfect racist example is that I think she is a feminist, right? Right. She's not using the word, but I think she is a feminist. I think that part of this is just being able to own the word, and and maybe and honestly, maybe this is going to ruffle feathers too. Take back the word from the really militant feminists that are not really trying to move to equality and maybe are saying like women are going to take over the world and we're going to murder all the men, which is not going to happen. I mean, that's not, we're so far away from that, but, the, you but know, we've seen them. We were at a women's rally in DC and woo, there were some very, you know, feminist with a capital F there that, uh, but I also think there's a lot of, but I think a lot of those women weren't trying to kill men. There was women that get really angry at right, men and right. they're really like, frustrated and you know and and i think also within frustration and anger there's people say things you know what i mean people say things like ah we just got to get rid of all the men there's also legitimate like militant feminists though that are like terrifying (laughs) that are like i think really do believe we should kill all men we're not gonna do that we're not doing no 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 don't worry everybody relax no i love penis (laughs) but i don't have a problem with and i love men's in 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 inner workings you know what i mean right oh yeah men are important balance to society and all those things um as humans, you know, we don't have to objectify all the men either. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I only like men for penis. their dicks. <laughs> right. I mean, I like, I like <laughs> men, but also, um, that if we can take back that word mm-hmm. and, and make it more about equality and make it more about, you know, fighting for our rights, I think that we, more people would get on board. I think that people I get think we afraid. just need a whole new word. I'm not, like I'm, a new I'm publicist honestly not opposed or PR to that. Or PR. The only thing about just that is that, like, do we need another word, or do we just? I mean, it to, is just what it is. And the word, it's, and the word has been, it has had different meanings at different phases of feminism. It's like serve different functions. Well, here's something though. Like one time, I came to you and was like, I think that we should put feminist, like feminist, you know, folk comedy, country duo, whatever. But we, you were like, no, no, let's not do that. No. So it's. I mean, it, it, I think it's there's a also a difference lit-lent. between calling yourself a feminist mm-hmm. and then using it as a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that like I'm not saying Dolly should walk around being like I'm the feminist country singer. Mm-hmm. But I think if she's interviewed and they say, do you consider yourself a feminist? I'd like to hear her say, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't need her to go talking about it every five seconds. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just it's just disheartening when they say, are you a feminist? And she goes, no. Right. That's my point. Because mm-hmm. I don't think it I, I think that like if you put it in front of something like our band you've just like you've painted the band right. in a way that's very very specific mm-hmm. and we are a feminist band we don't right. have to like have it in our name you know oh well, i like it that we don't clearly say that in any of our bios yeah. but i really am honored when a journalist takes it upon themselves to include that in you know an article that they're writing about right. us that i'm like yeah okay yes that's true and, and, the, I, and they get that what we our agenda is and i think the other mistake is to think that if it's cuz when you hear feminist you think that it's about women's stuff mm-hmm. and i think that feminism again it's about equality so men are included in this conversation mm-hmm. whether they like it or not you know they right. they are a part of our lives and so we need them to be a part of the conversation and that's i think what we do pretty well mm-hmm. is that we don't we get just them all to sing along yeah and because you know that's we can preach to the choir all the time and say like, ah, fuck men, kill all men and pander in that way. Mm-hmm. But the truth is like, that doesn't fix any, it doesn't help. It doesn't mm-hmm. fix anything. It's not, it's not how I actually feel either. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, that would be a marketing scheme mm. in my opinion mm-hmm. for me personally. Mm-hmm. If it was like, okay, now we're just going to be like men suck, men suck, men suck. You know what <laughs> I mean? Uh, suck men, suck men. No. Um, Another person, here's another thing that came up to me, came up, came up to me, came to me as I was looking through these. Taylor Swift's comment was, I don't really think about things as guys versus girls. I never have. I was raised by parents who brought me up to think if you work hard, as hard as a guy's, you can go far in life. Which I interpret to mean that she doesn't really see like a difference. She's like, I, I forgot I can do anything a guy can mm, do. I have the, right. I have the opportunity. She's, be- she's saying I have the same opportunities as guys do. Mm hmm. That, that is must the be nice. most, <laughs> I mean, that is the most privileged yeah. Uh, yeah. thing I've ever fucking heard out of someone's mouth. She, not only is she from a wealthy family, mm-hmm. she's a white woman. Mm-hmm. She's probably one of the, I, mean, I know you love Taylor. I'm so sorry. everybody. I love her. Taylor Swift. But she is one of the most mediocre performers 
I've ever. She is like the epitome to me of. That's mediocre. why they put so many danglies on her. So you watch you the have dangly to be distracted costumes because she can't. Oh, dance. but it's like <laughs> she is to me the epitome of a mediocre white woman, mm. and that she like got so far on so little, but because of her privilege. And I think it's also important to keep reminding ourselves, femi- and I think a lot of times people hear feminism and they think of white feminism, white feminism. Right. And it's partly because white feminists have come in and tried to like control that word. And I don't like that either. Mm-hmm. So again, I mean, if it comes back to like changing the word, fine. But I think all, in all honesty, we can just reclaim the word more mm-hmm. and say, this is what feminism needs to be. You mm-hmm. know. Well, if uh, another friend of mine we were talking about, he, his young daughter who's in high school is really is strongly against saying that she's a feminist. And I got real like, oh man, you should tell her that she is one and that she should want to be one or whatever. Um, and then he said that um, uh, Jane Fonda is a great example of like a terrible feminist. And I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. And that oh, she's yeah, just she this like, well, right now, you know, she's getting arrested every Friday for climate change. Mm-hmm. And he called it, and I've never heard it uh, said like this, but a photo of a photo feminist. Photo, where she's just for the photo op? Yeah, just for the photo yeah. op. Um, and I was like, it. oh, what other photo feminists? I mean, there's so many out there. But definitely with Jane Fonda. It's like, yeah, I mean, there's, there are these feminists that are giving a bad name, bad, yeah, co- bad yeah. connotation to it. But for him, when I was like, you just try, you, why is your young high school student, I mean, um, high school daughter, like so against it? And it's, it's because she, she sees all these hateful, yeah. rageful women out there. Um, I don't know. That's a weird tangent, but well, but it brings us to a good point too. There was an article you found on Refinery Twenty Nine. Uh, it was about how women don't identify as feminists and mm. why they don't identify as feminists. And to me, I think what it, and this article is saying this too, but I think partly the problem is because the fem- branding for feminism has gotten real wonky. <laughs> people don't feel like they fit into the label. Mm-hmm. So for example, a woman of color may not feel like a feminist because when she thinks of feminism, she thinks of white feminism and mm-hmm. totally reasonably so to not feel like she, that doesn't include her. Uh, a woman, a conservative woman who's anti-abortion doesn't feel like she can use the label feminism because feminists are tend to be very, very, very pro, not pro abortion, but pro choice. choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's sort of a whole more, nuanced thing but if we can for a moment as a thought experiment just put the idea of let's take abortion off the table just for a moment there's all these other things that a conservative woman would probably like to have that's in the feminist movement which is equal pay and you know not uh, being harassed at work Mm -hmm. and i mean a million things like that um a lot of poor women may mm-hmm. not feel like they're included in the feminist movement because if if a lot of what the f- these especially white feminists are pushing for is equal pay at the CEO levels right. you're missing like a huge majority of the women mm-hmm. so this is sort of this I, I think that that's where we've lost the plot with the with this concept of feminism with not the concept of feminism but with the the direction feminist has feminism has been going mm-hmm. to some degree but i don't think that that's an impossible thing i think that young women today can step up and go you know we're going to redefine this again mm-hmm. we're going to take it back we're going to we're going to remind these women that have been heading you know leading the charge and have done some really amazing things those are someone like gloria steinem who's notoriously not very Mm -hmm. aware of women of color when she talks about women Mm -hmm. that she they she still did a lot of really important work for everybody in terms of birth control pills for example Mm -hmm. and that like that work isn't negated so okay they they got that far they, they need to open their eyes. We need to reopen our eyes to the next level of feminism. And that feminism is that um, we got to include women of color. We need to include conservative and liberal women. Mm-hmm. We have to find ways to make sure that pe- women are being protected. That's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. A conservative woman, for example, certainly gets a benefit if the ERA mm-hmm. thing gets passed. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with, and we're not even talking about abortion at all at that point. Right. I'm not saying that can be a conversation that they have to t- speak about, you know, mm-hmm. the conservative woman versus the very liberal woman about abortion. I have my very strong opinions about that, and that's a whole <laughs> other thing. But I think that it doesn't mean we can't include conservative women mm-hmm. and have a, make a place for them in this conversation. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be so cool if, like, a young 
man stepped up and was like, I'm a feminist and I'm going to reclaim this word. And yeah, and they can to gather and, and people sort of the are, troops for it. Yeah. And people sort of are and people can and people. And I think that there's there's that fake feminist thing that some men are where they're like, I'm, I'm the most woke feminist dude. And it's kind of like I've, they do it to get who laid. Who are those? No, like, there's like those dudes oh to get like laid and stuff. And you're just like, dude, you're not, if you if you really want to be a feminist, you have to really understand like the issues. But but I think you are included. Right. You are included in this included. conversation. Yeah. You're, if you're willing to hear what you need to hear, then you please help us. Please mm-hmm. come join the movement. I think that that's you well. Know. You were saying the other day, like one of our good friends, you're like, I think he's the most feminist person I know, and he's a man. He's totally. like this, like, and he's a legitimately feminist person. Yeah, uh, whether he even knows it or not, <laughs> right? But just so supportive. He doesn't think much about. Um, well, she's dumb because she's a woman or anything. There's no hierarchy in his brain, it mm-hmm. feels like, about women. But that's it just upbringing. Feels very equal. upbringing. It's like, yeah. And you know, uh, and he's Christian. Of, I think right. he's Christian. Yeah. He was Christian as a kid. Now he's atheist. I don't know. You <laughs> could ask him. Well, one thing that I think were uh, like roots from my personal rage of feminism and not, not to like bring it down or whatever, but um, my father. There's, you know, there's three of us girls and then my mother who's like a true feminist or whatever. But my father, like growing up, there was so much rage because he was constantly like protecting us as the man that was his job to protect us and tell us what we could and couldn't do. And even just going home last month, like there were so many things of, you know, he even told me, no, I can't drive. Like it's dark out now. (laughs) It's like these little things that you're like, ah, it's just, if you had a son, you would be like here, you know, you could do whatever you want. Like I had, I had my lover come and and visit and he like wanted him to ask permission to stay in the house. I was like, if I was a man, you would be excited if I had a girlfriend coming over to whatever. But it's like, and it roots back to my sweet father who is only trying to protect us. But yet that there's, there was so much rage in high school yeah for like just not being able to just do what i wanted as a woman right and and clearly seeing the double standard there right and then just the notion and i'm sure it wasn't just but your it's father all love, i'm sure it was all in school i mean the, yeah, the oboe right. thing well not oboe clarinet what was it yeah the clarinet i mean <laughs> the there's nothing but there's all thing. these little things that add up to like right. why we are so angry and right. why the whole thing needs rebranding and because we all be, feel the same way. <laughs> and you, and, and I think that for me, the big message is it's okay to be angry mm-hmm. when someone's shitting on you. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But we're not allowed. We don't, we're, we're told we're not allowed to have those feelings. But it, okay. But with my dad, it's not shitting on me. It's love. No, it's but protecting. Okay. It's, it's so like, I will, t- ins- instead of shitting, I'll say oppressing because mm-hmm. it's still oppressive right. to say you're not, capable right of because leaving the house by yourself woman. because mm-hmm. you're a woman mm-hmm. and you could even he could make the argument well you know it's because there's predators out there and i want to protect you from the predators then we need to fucking teach the predators right. to not do that and that's also victim blaming and victim shaming mm-hmm. you by saying that like you you know don't wear that skirt because you're gonna get raped and it's mm-hmm. like you know this is we got to work on this you know yeah and i think that that's a really i i love that story in that i think it illustrates really well just a regular everyday thing right. that comes up and why feminism can be a helpful tool. Mm-hmm. I think that that's how we should be thinking about it too. Is it's like the, the, the umbrella of the movement is a tool to some degree where you can either le- lean back on it and say, am I crazy or should I be? <laughs> <laughs> is it okay that I want this equal, equal rights? Or, okay, cool, cool. But also I think if you want things to change, there has to be a movement. So people have to make move. They yeah. have to make changes. Mm-hmm. They have to stand up and do things. So if you want to be the kind of person that sits around and just lets everybody do all the work for you, but but you know what? There's lots of different ways to make the moves. It doesn't have to just be, you know, if you don't, if picketing isn't your cup of tea, that's totally fine. Uh, maybe it's just calling out that um, chauvinistic dude at the bar. That's right. an act of feminism. Right. You know, that's an act of self uh, protection, self defense, self not on. It's an act of strength and mm-hmm. an act of um, defiance mm-hmm. to say, I'm not going to let you put me in that box. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let you talk to me like that because I'm a woman, mm-hmm. whatever the scenario is. Mm-hmm. And I think that those those little acts if you call out your boss for harassing you at mm-hmm. work that's a feminist move mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be you you don't even have to be angry when you make the call you could just say hey jim can i talk to you for a minute in the office <laughs> when you touch my butt and call me baby it I, that's not acceptable mm-hmm. because i'm your equal and in, in your employee in your workplace mm-hmm. you know that's all and i'm and i'm not gonna 
allow, I'm not going to allow that. Mm -hmm. That's not like, I'm not angry when I say that, Mm -hmm. but women aren't, they don't feel empowered to do that. Well, hopefully listening to this podcast, they are. I mean, that's what I'm hoping is that if anybody out there listening has been feeling like, oh, I'm not a feminist. I'm not a feminist. Mm-hmm. I, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are. Right. And all the any, uh, men out there, too, listening, if you're listening, you probably are. Um, and when we say that, we don't mean that angry, militant thing. We, we mean what we, what we say, which is we want equality. Mm-hmm. And I do think that we are in a movement right now. Yeah. And it's really exciting. And it's especially exciting to be a writer in this, you know, and tonight we're doing New York Comedy Festival and we're debuting a new song about periods. And I think it's a beautiful, cool song that I think both men and women are going to really love because it sounds so fucking badass. And then the, the, the message, the is, message is just so simple. And I think also that, the simplicity is still there. I think that the simplicity of the message of feminism to me is equality. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then there's, we have to layer on things like we have to dissect, you know, I know again with the abortion stuff and like where, do, where does everybody land on that? Well, all that stuff. But um, yeah, I don't think it's like that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. And cool it people that are not <laughs> including other people and that are not understanding that that's important, you know, cool, mm-hmm. cool your jets with that. And listen, and you guys have to listen better too, mm-hmm. you know. But also and I think it's okay if you, I really do think that it's okay if you don't want to call yourself a feminist with a capital F. That's fine. But know that what you're standing for, know, know what you stand for and know what you're trying to achieve. And then maybe look in the mirror and say, oh, whisper to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, no, I think that's true. I think that you don't, we don't, we're not saying you have to call yourself a feminist. We're just making an argument for why we think it's kind of cool to call yourself a feminist. Mm-hmm. That, I think that sounds Yeah. Like that's cool. cool. Speaking of feminism uh, and sexual equality, oh, yeah. we live in a time now where you can buy sex toys. That's right. And please yourself and take care of yourself. <sighs> and where can you go buy a sex toy, Marie? Oh, right this way. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff to spice up your bedroom is even better. Select almost any one item for 50% off, and then Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. Enter offer code HORIO at checkout and get 10 tantalizing free gifts. A sexy item for him, a special gift for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. And six free spicy movies. Ooh. Plus, free shipping. That's HORIO. W-H-O-R-E-O. Horio at adamandeve.com. Oh, what a glorious world we live in. Yes, Ugh, the internet wow. and sex toys. <laughs> I love it. You know, Ugh. so here's the thing. If you have strong opinions about the word feminist, we would love to hear yes. them. We really want to know where you fall on that spectrum, whether you like to call yourself a feminist, whether you don't, whether you like the word, whether you don't like the word. Um, so curious to really get other, so we're not just speaking in a bubble over here. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm just curious that. if you have heard of other celebrities or heroes of your own that have blatantly said, like, I am not a feminist. I'm, I'm just curious who else is out there saying that they're not. And then maybe I'll tweet at them and sure. be like, why, why are you calling, why are you not calling yourself a feminist? If so, if you want to write us an email, you can write it at difficultwomenpodcast at gmail.com. All uh, right. Thanks for joining us, you guys. Thank you. I think this was a fabulous conversation. We love you. Love you. Wear a condom. Wear a condom. Wear a condom on your penis, please. I don't want a baby. I don't want a baby. I don't want a baby or a disease.